Welcome to the Light of Syria podcast. My name is Dori Fari and I will speak with a realized spiritual master about his views on life and the topic of spirituality. Savan Savan Nama Om Nama Savan Savan Nama Om Om Nama Savan Savan Nama Om Om Nama Savan Savan Nama Om Om Nama Kirpal Kirpal Nama Om Om Nama Kirpal Kirpal Nama Om Om Nama Jaibo Ajay bon nama om Om nama ajay bo ajay bon nama om Om nama savan savan nama om Om nama savan savan nama om Om nama kirpal kirpal nama om Om nama kirpal kirpal nama om So now we arrived to the eighth episode of season four, which is the last and closing episode of this season, because up to now every season causes the eight episodes. And then after this, we go back to the personal life and spiritual story of Master Siriaji. And welcome, dear Master. Welcome. Okay, and um, so I would like to say to those who listen to the podcast that uh, if you're interested, you're most welcome to participate uh, in the intense summer meditation spiritual retreat, which is going to be in the San Bani Ashram from the 15th of August to the 21st and if anybody is interested you can send me an email to the serial podcast at gmail.com and I highly advise to everyone to look up on the daily guidance meditation podcast which I think it's a beautiful podcast with a new episode every day and it's full of high teachings and it's very very relaxing I, I myself I really enjoy listening to it daily So you're also welcome to try it. And uh, I also wanted to say that we don't only have the podcast, we also started a magazine, which is called Sirius Magazine, as the name of Master Sirio. Sirio in Italian is Sirius is in English. So that if you are interested in reading this magazine, you can drop me an email to siriopodcast at gmail.com, the usual contact email, and I can send you in PDF as well. <clears throat> or if you want, you can also get it in paperback format. So anyway, now we are at the eighth episode, as I said, and um, we got um, a big bunch of questions, which I arranged um, around the topic, which is about the spiritual experiences. So 
this is today's topic and um, the, there is someone who writes that many people report the visions during meditation and also many spiritual teachers praise and appreciate this and are these visions real or just a projection of the mind and uh, what spiritual significance do they have So being in the field of spiritual quest, spiritual practice, studying many different paths, many different teachers, I have come and also practicing myself for uh, now 50 years, over 50 years. Um, I have come to my conclusions about this topic. In the beginning, when I read the scriptures of the Christians, these spiritual or mystic experiences, they explain them, they have them, and they consider them in a certain way means they give importance to certain kind of experiences on the mystic path and on the inner journey so for the Christians are important certain kinds of experiences for them is very much important the visions of Jesus or Yeshua is I like to call him because uh, Jesus what is it it's an American name, Gesù, it's an, it's an Italian name given to this person who was called Yeshua. For the Arabs, he's not even Yeshua, but he's Issa. So, <clears throat> anyway, for the, I think for the Jewish, this name is uh, Yeshua. Anyway, <clears throat> so for them it's very important having visions of this uh, founder of the religion, also of his so-called mother, means uh, this Miriam, that now has become Mary or uh, Maria, whatever, in the West, like Mohammed has become Mohammed or, um, I don't know, in English, what is it? Mohammed. Mohammed, they say, no? Anyway, so... Then I studied the, the, the Sufi kind of experience also. And there I saw that uh, it was different. Yes, they may give importance to some visions also. They do happen because in any spiritual path there are people who have visions and there are people who don't have visions. They have other set of inner experiences. So anyway, also in uh, Sufism, they have uh, their own kind of uh, experiences which are understood to be very important on that path, which are different than from the Christians. So then uh, Buddhism, there again, the topic is different. The Buddha didn't talk about having visions, didn't talk about inner planes, he didn't talk about several things that on other paths they do talk. He talked about nirvana. Achieving nirvana means extinguish, extinguish of all, extinction of all mental activities, physical sensory activities and getting into, into a state of perfect bliss beyond the time and space. So that's the, uh, the goal there, achieving nirvana, a complete silence, a complete extinction of all the physical and sensory perceptions and getting into a state of complete bliss, complete silence. He didn't even explain it very much how it is, because when they ask him, how is it nirvana, he always refused to answer. Why did I refuse to answer? In my understanding is because he understood very well that it was going to be different for everyone. 
So my nirvana is not going to be your nirvana. And uh, so he didn't talk much about either inner experiences of different kinds, but even about nirvana, he didn't explain very much how it is. Then, Hinduism. Hinduism is a bit like Christianity, is full of uh, visions. Visions are very important. Visions of Shiva, Krishna, Vishnu, Kali, Durga, Ganesh, this and that. They have so many deities and they are all important. So any vision is welcome there. Vision of uh, Vishnu, vision of his incarnation, which could be Rama or uh, Krishna, or uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or what? Then visions of uh, the Shiva tradition, which is different. This is Hinduism, but Shivaism and uh, Vaishnava, they are totally like two different religions yes. in the same religion. Yes. So Shivaita uh, or uh, Shivaism, they like visions of, uh, you know, Mahadeva, how they call it, the Shiva. And then also Shankaracharya, these are the, those who are understood to be incarnations of Shiva. And then many others, of course. Um, <clears throat> and then there are the Kali worshippers. I was just thinking about that. If you that. go to Calcutta, in that area, they worship Kali. Kali is the goddess. <laughs> they don't care much about, yes, Shiva, yes, but Kali is the main one. In that tradition, in that understanding, Kali is the spouse or the, 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 the female side of the Shiva energy. She was the male, Kali or Durga or uh, some others also. They are the female side, like Shakti. Shakti is the energy which is female. Purusha and Shakti or Prakriti. And so many different names. Hinduism, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very huge and wide, um, let's say, vocabulary to explain and to, and to mention all these uh, aspects of the divine. Because what are these? All these deities that they worship, all these gods and goddesses, they are all aspects of the divine. They are all personifications of energies of nature. So then if uh, all these many people, they have different visions, then are these uh, made by the mind? No, no, no. They are not made by the mind. Let's say that, as I always say, God respects our personal psyche, our personal culture, our personal religion, and he manifests to us in the way that we may welcome him. So, in this case, then, then we could also say she, because if it's a personal way, he or she. Yes, he or she. It's, uh, to me, it's uh, natural that a man understands God as a man. And a woman should understand God as a woman, as a female. Because, uh, because that's how it is. Male and female. God is neither male nor female to me. God is above the two attributes, is above duality, so he is neither female nor male. He is above these two. And uh, these uh, two aspects, this duality, is there up to a certain point in the spiritual uh, journey, in the spiritual evolution. At some point it disappears. There is only the one, which is above Shiva and Shakti and the uh, male and female aspects of the divine. So anyway, going back to the Hinduism, then there are also many other paths, like, uh, for instance, in uh, Vedanta or Advaita Vedanta, is not very much important the vision thing. One of the great teachers of Vedanta of this uh, present time has been Ramana Maharshi. 
And uh, he didn't advocate vision. Even if people had vision and they told him, he, al- he never gave importance to it. He always said, try to understand who we see in this, we see in what you are seeing. Don't get stuck to what you're seeing. Try to understand who is at the origin, who is seeing, mm-hmm. who are you, no? That's the point. Um, so raising above me and you, subject and object and just meld the two into one that's the goal so yeah for instance Ramana Maharshi didn't give any importance to visions although people who were with him also had visions because as I said we are all different and there are people who have a tendency towards having visions and there are people who don't have a tendency they have a tendency to experience God as divine presence as a cosmic consciousness going into the universe Uh, as in 2D expansion of the divine but not seeing the divine this is also there so the, the, this creates a bit of uh, confusion and sometimes also some frustration in people because if you have a teacher who emphasizes very much visions then if you don't have vision you feel very frustrated But maybe you perceive the divine, you feel the divine when you see the meditation, you feel saturated with this presence, but you don't see that, you see any form. But then what is the connection with the Master? Because for example in, uh, in Sankhmat or Surat Shabd Yoga, we speak about meditation on the inner light and inner sound. Mm. And recently I, I received some phone calls from some interested people and then they asked, and so, so how is this practice? Explain a little bit. And then one wants to simplify it. And you describe briefly and then you say it's a I focus meditation and it's meditation on the inner light and inner sound. So I mean that there are these teachings, there is this path, which is which means this that meditation on the inner light and sound. And what is the connection to the teacher regarding the um, visions or experiences? Well, God into his pressure power manifests as sound and light or light and sound this is definitely so means if you withdraw from the physical body if you go deep into the third eye and you open the third eye then what happens normally to most of the people is that this dark way that we see when we close our eyes disappears the inner vision opens and we begin seeing waves of light of different colors so these waves of light can be whirling waves of light, rolling waves of light, and most of the people see this. So, light may become very, very intense. It can become intense as bright as midday sun. And then you really feel saturated with ecstasy and bliss and everything. But you don't see any form. This is possible. Mm -hmm. Or you can see this light taking up the form of your master. Because when you are initiated on a path and you come into the aura, the energy field of a master, then your psyche, your cells, I would say, your whole being becomes saturated with the energy of that master. So when you go within this divine power manifests to you in the form of your master because that's what you recognize that's what all about it's, all, it's what's all about the path that you have chosen that you're in well just as we said in the in previous two episodes when we talk about um, near death experience and uh, the mystery of death and there also we said anyway the master is there like the guide on the inner planes yes yes means this divine light takes up the form of the master and guides you in the inner planes. There where you need to go, what you need to understand, that's revealed to you. What you need to know. And so much information can be loaded into you in a very short time when you are out of mind, out of body, into another dimension. Because what the what we can inhold as uh, information at that level is let's say at least 10 times or we can say a hundred times more than what we can 
in hold in this physical mind uh, which is uh, which is um, let's say uh, limited by the brain the capacities of this brain which can hold a certain amount of information and no more than that and on that stage when we are on an astral plane or causal plane we can receive so much information which is which is incredible much and then when we come back anyway in the physical body and in this uh, um, physical brain in this physical mind then we forget most of it because uh, because which this mind is just not fit to in hold all that kind of expansion all that kind of information because it's limited but then where is it stored where does this information go well it stays as a memory to the person who has had it to a certain point and then if you repeat that experience you keep it alive if you don't repeat it then you forget about it definitely you forget about it I have a question connected to this because I read um, several times that uh, the human brain the psyche is so particular that it has like superpowers which you don't use like we use the 2% of the brain And sometimes that's why so many miraculous things happen or some people have a super memory or are capable to understand incredible things because then maybe they use a higher percentage of the brain. Well, because yes, they, they come into a state of consciousness in which uh, uh, other parts of the brain become activated. So it also means that we are uh, mostly unconscious about what we have inside. Definitely, we are, uh, let's say, out of our potential. Our potential may be 100, but we use only, how much? 10%, even with the mobile, no, with the internet. It has an incredible, uh, an incredible amount of information, but uh, how much each person uses of this? A very limited amount. The same is with the mind. Somehow, internet is a reproduction of the mind. Yes, it's uh, yes, that's right. Because then there are these uh, neural neural con neural connections, so yes. so just like the internet. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> yes, most of the people have uh, when they when they treat a spiritual path and they do a spiritual practice. What they have is uh, this kind of experiences. I said, uh, seeing this inner light and. If you follow a path in which the sound is also given importance, then uh, you listen and by and by you develop also that inner hearing faculty. So you begin also hearing. In many paths, the, most of the paths, I would say, they don't consider this uh, listening to the sound. They don't consider the, uh, this aspect of the divine. It's mainly on Sant Mat, which is given so much relevance about, about this. But in many other paths, it's not given. But that doesn't mean that they don't come to hear the inner sound at some point. When they go very deep into meditation, most of the people, even those who have near to that experiences, I've, heard, I've listened to, to many of their experiences, and most of them, when they go out of body and they cross the tunnel and go into the astral casa plane, wherever they reach, they experience light, visions of light, or merging with the light, that reveals to them many, many informations, many teachings, and also sounds. Most of them, for most of them, sound is also there. Very, very enchanting melodies, very heavenly and ecstatic melodies. They all describe this. But what about those parties? Well, I don't know each of them. I heard um, like it says, from some of my friends who practiced a certain kind of... Uh, Buddhism and Qigong um, years ago and they told me that they had uh, problems with it because there the main teaching was to be empty to completely empty ourselves and like like uh, sitting for hours in meditation and, to, and uh, they even went to, um, uh, abroad, I, uh, there was an ashram in the United States and they even there stayed there for months practicing and uh, the it was big part of the practice to be able to sit for hours like the statue and moving and empty yourself, have no thoughts, no this, no that, whatever, but 
to be detached completely from everything, from yourself and from everybody. And um, one of uh, these my friends described that it was a big problem for her that uh, she began to be affectionate towards the teacher, but not like a sentimental love, but like when you love your teacher, that you feel gratitude and love. And then she said it was hard for her because she was like so grateful for the experience to go through this uh, personal development and becoming a better person and realizing something which she wanted to realize. But then the teacher was upset at her for this and then they had to leave the ashram because she began to feel this gratitude and this kind of love for the master. Well, this is the Zen path. Buddhism, yes, it's an aspect of Buddhism. Um, Buddhism also is not just one path. There are so many different approaches to Buddhism. Like Tibetan Buddhism, this kind of Buddhism, is totally different than uh, Zen Buddhism. Yes, but what surprised to me that um, they were doing this practice for long. And then they also met you and they participated in a retreat with you and they really liked it. And then they were always the same people. No? And then when they were doing that practice, then like blank, no? be empty, <laughs> detached, <laughs> nothing, det be detached from yourself, be detached from the divine, be detached from everything, even from your teacher. And then they come here and then here is totally different. And then you focus on the inner light, you focus on the inner sound, you focus on the master and the eyes of the master, you listen to the teachings of the master. And um, so I was wondering in myself, how is it then? It's, well, it's yeah, I'm sure they had a different kind of experience. No, because then uh, if people do a different kind of path, where the experiences, the visions are not contemplated or not taken into consideration, but still people might have it. And then... I believe that also in the Zen practice, people have experiences of inner light, maybe inner sounds and visions also. But they, the teachers of that path, they say, don't give importance to it. Try to reach this kind of nirvana, mm -hmm. total emptiness, total absence of forms, shapes, mental uh, schemes, uh, uh, logic, reason, everything, raise above all of this. So, yeah, th that's what they cultivate there. But, you know, everything that you do, it has a certain flavor, it has a certain energy of specific energy, and uh, it may be more pleasant or less pleasant. If you eat a dish, it may be very well uh, dressed, and uh, it becomes very flavory, or you can just cook it with, uh, with water without any salt and anything, and it's uh, something else, you know? <laughs> so, the, also the spiritual paths are like this. There are paths which are just uh, like uh, cooking something without any condiment. So, yes, it's food. You can eat it and nourish yourself. But it doesn't, have any, any, it doesn't give you any pleasure. So, uh, also the spiritual paths are like this. St. Mat is a path which is well... Uh, I mean, it, it is full of condiment, it is very pleasant, it has many aspects which make the path very complete. So you have, uh, you have, yes, inner content with the light and sound, you may see your master if you are of that kind of person, if you have that kind of psyche that can have visions, or you may just see light, perceive the divine, uh, raise above body consciousness, go into kind of cosmic consciousness, and uh, and that, and that's it. But uh, then there is also the master, and there is uh, the devotion, and uh, so a path is uh, complete to me when it has all these aspects. When it has the knowledge, knowledge side, what is uh, Gyan Yoga, as they say in India, where it has. Uh, uh, let's say the bhakti yoga, devotion to the master as the divinity, manifested divinity, or the karma yoga in which you do seva, seva service, uh, selfless service for uh, the path that you follow and for any kind of person that needs your help. So karma yoga, bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, and then uh, you can add also some other kind of paths into it. So it's a very complete path, that's why I like it. Well, actually, I was just uh, thinking about this, that, um, which is another question, that uh, we talked about the spiritual experience and the importance of, um, on this path, seeing the, in the light and hearing the inner sound, 
and uh, or maybe seeing the light form of the master to have these kind of experiences. But I thought that um, it's also sad, which is for me, it has been always a very beautiful part of the teaching, um, teachings of of Saint Mata Sura Chedi Yoga, that uh, it is said that um, one third of the teachings come through books and and uh, videos or whatever means through the words, and then two thirds come through the eyes, which also means the living master, because of course you can look into the eyes only of the living master and. There is uh, the so-called darshan, the glance or seeing or changing, exchanging glance, to look into the eyes of the master, like uh, looking into the mirror of the divine, which is a very powerful something and it's a very extraordinary and fantastic experience, but it's only through the living master, through the person or the living master in certain circumstances. And we have to be open for it and welcome it, but that's also a spiritual experience when you have you can have like almost like visions with the open eyes and it's in front of your physical eyes you see it and you perceive it and it's like a being in a high meditative state just because of looking at this person who is the human pole who is connecting you to the divine currents and so that with open eyes, through the eyes of the master, like the gate to the infinite, you can uh, have the experience of the inner light and inner sound at the same time. And then in this case, what the question was, which, which came up in me, that then what is more important to have when we do our meditation practice, to have these kind of experiences or our connection to the living master, which is, um, which is also sad, not just this, because there, are, there is another thing which is very important for me on this path, that, which I said about the one-third and two-thirds of the teachings, but also, which um, I see that not everybody understands well, that it's a very crucial point, it's a, it's a milestone, it's a fundament of this path, that the, the path is the master, and the master is the path which is the living master. And um, so then what is more important? The experience or the master? The connection or the real connection to the master? Because I mean, but then one can also discuss it. What is the connection to the master that I think of him or I have seen him or I met him or I, as you said, that if your, even your cells are saturated with the presence and the psyche and the aura of the master, well, that's a real connection. But then, then how, how is it? Both of the things are important. Um, meeting the master is very important. When you meet the master, then the inner vision opens, the inner perception opens, and you begin perceiving and uh, seeing uh, things which are above the mental state and the sensory perception. Yes. <clears throat> in, the, in this path... We give so very much importance to the living master. The, this path is called as Sant Mat, the path of the saints, or is called also the Gurmat or uh, Guru Bhakti. Means uh, the path of the Guru and devotion to the Guru. So here the living master is a very important central figure. And if there is the living master, the path works. If there is no living master, then let's say it works 50% or even less. And I want to be generous. In some <laughs> cases it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. For certain people it doesn't work at all when the living master disappears. They just can't follow the path anymore, they can't connect with it. They just lose track because, uh, because it was only by the grace and uh, through the pre holy presence of the Master they could perceive something. Without that, if taking out that element of the living Master, <laughs> nothing remains. But, uh, excuse me, please go on. So, anyway, <clears throat> Master Kirpal used to say this, that uh, one-third of the teachings is gathered 
through reading books, listening to satsangs, and, uh, and all what you can get through outer means. Nowadays, there are so many means, which uh, at the time of Master Kirpa did not exist. At the time, there were tapes, you could record his talks, they began to have some, uh, some videos, some small films. Nowadays, you know, there is internet, so you can have all these, uh, on YouTube you can find hundreds of satsangs which you can listen. And, and the Light of Syria podcast. And there is the Light of Syria podcast. And uh, <laughs> at the time there was a magazine, which, which was a very simple magazine. The magazine which we are doing now, which Doriji is doing now, is a very beautiful magazine, which uh, compared to the one which they were doing at the time of Master Kirpal and at the time of Sanji, I mean, it's so much more beautiful, so much more complete. And you should just read it, because so much work has been put into it. And uh, it's been done like all the other things that we do to help you progress, keep on the path, keep your enthusiasm high and keep you uh, steadily following the path with pleasure, with involvement. Anyway, so what was I, leaving my, what I was saying? Uh, one third of the teachings comes through these outer means. Two thirds comes through darshan looking in the eyes of the master. Now, I see that this is also very much a practice which is prominent on this path. And also on this path is not the same everywhere because I met with several gurus of this path and the importance which was given to Darshan by Master Kirpal and by Sanji is not so much present with other gurus of Santmat. So, <clears throat> Um, two-thirds come through darshan, through looking in the eyes of the Master. And this is very true. In my experience, it has been extremely true. I've had so many experiences in meditation, because I've done a lot of meditation, really a lot. I, am, I honestly I tell, in my life, I never met a person who has done so much meditation as I've done for this very long period. I have met people who have done a lot of meditation for short periods, maybe a few months, a week, uh, this and that, short periods, but not for so many years. So the, 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 the good luck which I've had, it has, it, has, it has been that I have such a perseverance, I have such an insistence and such a, such a longing for uh, realizing myself that uh, I went on for so many years doing so much meditation. In those so many years I got so many experiences. But the beautiful experiences and very easy and very free of charge, I would say, that I had just by looking into the eyes of both Master Kirpal and Sanji, uh, no, compar no comparison, I would say. Because a glance and I would be in the sublime state of consciousness, completely out of all uh, limitations, out of all uh, impurities, out of all dirt of this world, in complete state of, uh, you can say, very pure consciousness, very true and pure consciousness. So, <clears throat> I, can just, I can just emphasize this point that uh, Sant Mat, as I was saying, it has so many condiments which made the path very appealing, very pleasant. And above this, there is this uh, main factor of uh, the Living Master and Darshan with the Living Master. Now I see many times people, uh, when I give a lecture, or when, I, when I am in a public, meeting with people who follow maybe different paths and they feel embarrassed looking at me they close their eyes or they look elsewhere and maybe they are on a Buddhist path on a Hindu path or a Sufi path for, uh, for years, decades 
And I wonder, this person has been following a path for so many years. And, and he didn't even, he, he, she didn't even understand that when you are with a teacher, you look at the face of the teacher at least. And even more, you look into his eyes. Because what are, what is a, what are we human beings? We are eyes. That's all. I mean, what's the main thing of us human beings? from which we express ourselves mostly, our inner intrinsic nature, it's our eyes. That's why they say, eyes are the windows of the soul. So if you want to perceive the soul, then look into the eyes of a master. And yeah, I see these people who have been spiritual paths for so many years. They, don't even, they didn't even learn this very simple thing. That when you go to a teacher, the main and first thing that you have to do He's looking to his face with full attention and looking to his eyes with even more full attention than something may happen. So anyway, this is my this is my understanding of uh, what the spiritual undertaking is all about and uh, the different paths that uh, try to achieve something higher and what, it, what makes a path really appealing really complete and what makes a path let's say midway appealing and not even not appealing at all now, we went a long way from these questions so I hope that we could give a satisfying reply to everyone And um, so thank you for the for those who send the questions. And then if you have any questions, then you're most welcome to send it. And then don't forget about the Daily Guidance Meditation Podcast. And if you are interested in reading the Sirius magazine, then just please message me at the SiriusPodcast at gmail.com. And next episode, as always, comes after two weeks. And uh, now we can listen to this beautiful mantra sang by Master Sirius G. So God bless you all. Om Namo Savan Savan Namo Om Namo Savan Savan Namo Om Namo Savan Savan Namo Namah Savan Savan Namah Om Namah Kirpal Kirpal Namah Om Om Namah Kirpal Kirpal Namah Om Om Namah Jaibo Ajay bo nama om Om nama ajay bo ajay bo nama om Om nama savan savan nama om Om nama savan savan nama om Om nama kirpal kirpal nama Om nama kirpal kirpal nama Om nama ajay bo ajay bo nama Om Namah Jai Bo Jai Bo Namah Om Om Namah Savan Savan Namah Om Om Namah Savan Savan Namah Om Om Namah 
kirpal, kirpal nama o. Om nama kirpal, kirpal nama o. Om nama jai bo, jai bo nama o. Om nama ajai bo, ajai bo nama o. Om nama savan, savan nama o. Om nama savan, savan nama o. Om nama kirpal, kirpal nama o. Kirpal, Kirpal Nama Om Om Nama Ajaibo, Ajaibo Nama Om Om Nama Ajaibo, Ajaibo Nama Om Om Nama Ajaibo Ajay bon namao, ajay bon namao.